Hello, everybody. Welcome to the What Culture Gaming Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Tilford, joined by Rachel Shackleton. Hello, hello. And Josh Brown. Hello, hello. Now, I have only had four hours sleep because I stayed up <laughs> for the, the Game Awards. And so it's been a hell of a day. Spider-Man, we went to see Into Spider-Verse, and then the Avengers 4 trailer came out, and then we did the podcast and the reviews and all sorts of content all across the website and, and then the we YouTube. decided to do, oh, we'll film the Game of the Year today. We did film the Game of the Year as well, so that's out there as well. But for this podcast, we're going to break down the news that came out of the Video Game Awards, and we'll have a separate one for all the nominations and the awards themselves. So we might as well go with the first thing that came out of nowhere during the show, which is literally Jeff Keighley going, I don't think anyone knows what this is, cut to a logo, the Nintendo Switch logo, as it turns out that Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 is real after all, and it's only on the Switch. This was a, a roller coaster of emotions for me personally. <laughs> Didn't know what to think, because I, I, the news video, I think, is up at the time of, yeah. uh, at least when we're recording this. It's, it is. And it's 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 like a Nintendo Switch ex- exclusive made by Team, Team Ninja. Ninja, of all people. Ha, how? So, okay, so <laughs> Team Ninja are the dudes that made Neo and Ninja Gaiden and Dead or Alive and, and that awful Ninja Gaiden animated one that was just like completely bad. Oh, yeah. But they're now doing a Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Now, Rach, what do you think of such things? I mean, any Switch exclusive is great, but mm-hmm. I do sort of question the logic behind this yeah. one. It's like if you're going to make a game a Switch exclusive that's not a Nintendo you know, character game, at least have some kind of Switch gimmick, something that makes mm. good use of the Switch. But why is this game on the Switch? Other than, which is what I can sort of say is probably the, the reason mm-hmm. is that they couldn't make it look good enough on the PS4 and the Xbox That one. is a very good <laughs> so point. So they sort of compromised and thought, it'll look okay on the Switch. Yeah, because that's the thing. Even in the <laughs> in the trailer, like even this initial footage does look quite ropey. It's it does. very um, cartoony. Yeah, very cartoony. Uh, the animations aren't necessarily very well polished. It, actually, honestly, I thought it was Marvel Heroes, which is the old mm-hmm. like Steam PC-based Marvel sh- uh, top-down isometric combat thing. And I thought they were doing like a Switch version of that because the Switch seems to hoover up a lot of different ports. And then when they folded the logo, faded the logo in, I was like, really? This yeah. is Ultimate Alliance? So, so, so many f- thoughts on this, right? First of all, <laughs> the exclusivity thing, because I, w- I want to clean this up for, mm-hmm. for once, because mm-hmm. th- I know when it comes to the idea of exclusives and console holders having exclusives, I'm kind of for it because it creates games that you wouldn't see the third parties do. There's a yes. reason story-driven uh, single-player games are around, and that's because the big console owners have the funds to um, fund them and mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm fine with that. What I'm not entirely fine with is taking a series that was previously multi-platform and then making it exclusive. I can see, yeah. I know exactly why Nintendo have done it this time, because I genuinely don't think Ultimate Alliance would have been made if not for one of those big publishers, mm-hmm. like at least helping out in its uh, production. But for me, sorry, our equipment is prone <laughs> to sorry, fall apart, I'm but it's okay. We're all I'm falling I'm apart. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm for sorry. me. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think I like it. I think it's a, it's a strange thing because, I mean, we've got Spider-Man's now exclusive to the PS4, obviously because of the way that Sony handled the rights. And it's just something as big as a Marvel property you assume to be available everywhere because the other two Ultimate Alliances were. So it's a strange choice to now suddenly, like, only put it on the Switch. There were little, you know, little Marvel games on the DS, if I recall correctly. Mm. And it's like, it's not like it's unheard of, but it's just, it's strange. <laughs> We'll see. It I looks, think it looks like a mobile game. It does look a little bit like a mobile game. Um, that's again. That's why I kind of thought it was more like a Marvel Heroes thing. But I mean, some of the stuff gave me uh, promise. They show some, they, they show some cutaway uh, f- like fatality style animations. It shows Wolverine like uh, gearing up to take off like this giant. What do you call those giant robots that are in X Men? Sentinel's head and uh, does that in lovely slow motion. Yeah. I was like, okay, if you're going to bring back the cutaway kills from the first uh, Muir, then that's fine. Um, but I hope that they do a bit more with it in terms of the presentation. What do you think? Because I know obviously since Marvel are now on the uh, the gaming license again, and they're hmm. trying to bring things more in line uh, with the MCU. The roster that we saw was very MCU oriented, and the actual plot itself is about chasing down the Black Order and Thanos and getting yeah, the literally stones. You know what I mean? Yeah, which obviously means that it was developed in tandem with at least the planning stages of Infinity War. Um, but being a journalist for this website or whatever the hell I am, <laughs> the first thing I noticed was that Spider-Man in uh, Ultimate Alliance Three has the same gloves as in the preview shot from the set of Far From Home. Is that it's true? It's the black glove with the red fingers. Mm. I thought it looked very MCU related. Yeah. I, I knew it wasn't the uh, homecoming suit, but I thought it looked I think it's a little blend. Okay. I think he's got the gloves from the new movie and the overall costumes got it from the old one. Yeah. But they're obviously like trying to tap into the ongoing MCU stuff and we're yet to see what state Spider-Man's it's in. It's for kids who are sort of into, you know, 
this sort of stuff. I mean, I'm well, kids, there. okay, I didn't mean kids. Kids at, at home and, and kids. big kids. And okay, big, the, the, the Switch is not just for kids. It's my favorite console, <laughs> but what I'm saying is they're clearly aiming it at the mass market. Yes, yeah. and, pl- and plus, like I mean, the different graphic style is obviously to get around the rendering side of it too, because the first two games were way more polished and way more like asset heavy, whereas this thing is almost cell shaded in the way that it looks. Mm-hmm. Um, let us move on to something else, which is a game called Ashen. Now, I forget <gasps> the year this was first shown, um, but if you're a Souls fan, <laughs> then Ashen is like the nearest thing to like a Souls adjacent game that is just, hey, if you want more Souls, you want to have that hit yet again. Um, Ashen is that game, and they said it was available as of yesterday. Um, so it's out on Xbox and PC. Yeah. Um, have you been following this thing? Uh, actually, no, I'm going to be completely honest. Um, seeing it this morning uh, at the, you know, the, what do you call it? Was the, the first big old awards? <laughs> yes. The rundown was the first that I've seen of it, mm-hmm. and I am intrigued because it's obviously, like you said, very heavily influenced by Dark Souls. Mm. I actually see more of a Bloodborne kind of style to it because you know there's a part in Bloodborne where there's a focus on bringing people back to like a safe haven, mm-hmm. taking them to this chapel, and it sort of reminded me of that. You're sort of escorting someone through this ridiculously beautiful, dank world, and um, it just, I love it already. Yeah, it's, uh, it's got this kind of like base building mechanic to it. Like they yeah. want you to, obviously they've, I mean, that's the whole thing. You've seen a lot of the competition yeah. as far as souls go, trying to think of different aspects to make their games unique. Like I love the gambling mechanic in Lords of the Fallen. Yes. Um, you gamble, you whether you want to keep going, get a multiplier and bank your souls later on. And obviously they've realized that the bonfire, the, the safe space is like a big key component of a souls game or like yeah. a game like that. Yeah. So they've built that out into its own mechanic and that's a really cool thing. Yes. Um, I can't think of the name of the game that was all melee driven that was like a souls game. Um, the name of the game was like from uh, oh, it was, Salt and Sanctuary? No, it was something like Devolver, but I don't think it was called that. It doesn't matter. Was it the roguelike um, one? No, it was it was just like Souls, and I even played it, but it was it was a martial arts game anyway. It's and, uh, recently. Yeah, and it was oh. like you just punch and kick things, and you learn moves based on how they were done to you. You had to block them, and you would learn that move. Um, and it's got like a dude with a white mask. It's called something like Devolver. The it's definitely will know. yeah, the it's definitely will published know. by Devolver Digital. Um, <laughs> cool. But either way, the art style that was in that game, it wasn't cell shaded, but it kind of had that like punchy, like you know, very accentuated color uh, color palette. And I like that about Ashen as well, because obviously it's called Ashen, and it's playing on the Souls vibes, but yeah. it's way more colorful and more immediate. And, Beautiful yeah. thing. That's the thing. Yeah, the first thing I noticed about it was just how bloody beautifully haunting it was. <laughs> Everything yeah. looks so lush, like the way it comes together, it's not it's not the most colorful thing in the mm. world, but that's, it has something to it. It really yes. does have a vibe to it that I really it dig. Al- mm-hmm. It almost reminds me of like Little Nightmares and Tear yes. Away, like those yes. type yeah. of styles. Like yeah. it's, it looks brilliant. I think um, ever since Fortnite kind of did the whole like cartoony, uh, Overwatch as well, like that sort of cartoony graphic style, I think a lot of devs are looking to do that because it's, it's less processor strain. You can kind of flatten out a lot of the textures and it means that you get a way more like visual pop, which I guess mm-hmm. still works on, on big TVs and stuff. So that thing looks cool. Um, next up is the remake of Crash Team Racing. Yeah. Nitro Refueled. Now you'd think that I would have done a small backflip and burst at this point, but I don't actually care that much because I don't trust them to maintain the physics. Now, Crash Team Racing is one of my oh. favorite games of all time, um, and I, that's why I don't believe that they'll get it just right. Scott, but never happy Tailford. I, Scott, that might never be happy Tailford. I bought a 55-inch TV. I'm perfectly happy, thank you very much. But <laughs> Crash Team Racing, the Nitro thingy, I, as soon as they um, showed the trailer and they, they cut from the old school PS1 graphics to the new one, um, and it just, it, it immediately I started thinking of the, the follow-ons that weren't made by Naughty Dog, and I was like, no one ever got it right again. I know you're going to say that they did, but no one ever got it right again. The last Naughty Dog CTR is the finest kart racing <laughs> game ever made and carry right. on. But I, 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 I don't, don't, get it, don't okay. I understand that they might they might mess it up because yes. I know you really don't like the end scene trilogy because they messed up the jump and yep. it is the best game Terrible. Of last year. <laughs> nah, but, uh, didn't qualify. So this <laughs> <laughs> it looks lush, Scott. It looks so good. And it I don't does. get the sort of pessimism behind it. I know it might not be perfect. It might not be the PlayStation 1 game, but no not... remake is ever going to be exactly the same. And do you not just get a little giddy at the fact that you're going to be able to play the best kart racer of all time, or at least a facsimile of the best kart racer online. of all time? Online. Okay, so online, that, exactly. Online. That's what will probably patch it over. And the, the only thing is, it's not pessimistic. I just need to I need maintain expectations okay. because it's not like remakes like maintain their old school physics. There's so many remakes that you know chop and change the source code, and you know it's not Naughty Dog. So you're trying it. It's a different dev team trying to match up to things. And like Spyro played extremely well because it doesn't have to be very meticulous. I honestly thought they messed Crash up. I never got on board with the new way that he felt with my muscle memory memory was off and okay. I've lived on Crash Team Racing since whenever like 1999 or something oh, okay. um, I've still got it on my Vita I played it this morning and so like I still have it everywhere yeah. and so for me I need it to be exactly bang on with a reskin yeah. and anything other than that is just going to make me go Ugh. how do you think this is going to do because obviously we've had N Central we've mm. had Spiral Reignited but those Medieval as well Medieval coming up but those uh, two packages of three different games have 
in my opinion, a more nostalgic, widespread appeal than Crash Team Racing. Even though I love Crash Team Racing, hmm. I always thought it was a weird one back when it was rumored that it was going to be the next big Crash-related mm -hmm. remaster because a lot of people do like it, but it doesn't sort of seem to have the extended pull that the original games do. You know what I mean? You love mm -hmm. it. Gamers love it. But it's kind of a weird one in my oh, opinion. See, for me, I think it's it's the last one they can do that sits within that aura where, like, it's the last one that Naughty Dog did before they left. Um, you know, because then it was Crash Bash was kind of the last good Crash game. But that wasn't even then. That was Eurocom. <laughs> Um, and so for me, like Crash Team Racing is the last good one that you can do. And I would argue that CTR is bigger than Medieval. Um, like people oh, know yeah. Dan Fortescue, but I think yeah. that they, literally everybody played Crash Team Racing at like a friend's house or something. Yeah, um, right. So yeah, I would, I would totally say that. I don't know how much of the old school PS1 games and stuff you're looking forward to in far as remakes and remasters and all those kind of things. Well, what I can say is if we mm. look at uh, how Crash was when it first came out, like you said, you weren't very impressed with how it controlled. I wasn't either. I'd rage quit it hard with many <laughs> swear words. To, yeah. So many swear words. Uh, <laughs> however, the Spyro remake, which fair enough, like I was much more excited for, was so well done. It's beautiful. It feels the same and yet like so much smoother and so mm. much more infinitely, just so much better. Mm -hmm. um, so, going by that sort of, you know, that, that graph, yeah, that makes Crash Team Racing <laughs> is going to be okay. It's is it fun. though? It's going to be okay. Don't let yourself get excited for things, man. I do all the time. And then the hype deflates. Have you not <laughs> seen Mass Effect Andromeda? I mean, yeah, th Ooh. these... I, there was a time when can that we, game we, looked promising. When are we talking about Bioware, by the way? Uh, we will talk about Bioware. That might be towards the end. That's the main event, uh, but we'll get there soon. Cool. Okay, so uh, another new game that was uh, shown off is the next one from Supergiant. Now, these are the guys that did uh, Transistor and Bastion and uh, Pyre, um, which are all phenomenal games. And Supergiant are just a, a phenomenally creative and, and purely passionate force for creativity. I love every single thing that they've done, um, and I don't know if you guys have played everything they've done so far. Not everything. The hell. No, you I, I watched a playthrough of Bastion. Good, that is better than anything <laughs> before. Ba so Bastion, I mean, their Lovely. whole shtick is isometric top-down. It's almost Diablo-style, like, mm -hmm. hack and slashy gameplay, oh, with right. a bit more to it. All right. Diablo's a totally fine product, and I recommend you check out the latest <laughs> chatty faces. Um, but, for the sake of uh, Hades, it seems like they've doubled down even more on that approach to the gameplay, because Pyre um, kind of went down this more sporty sort of route. You yeah. had the same like uh, perspective but you were trying to dunk this like all basketball huh? yeah it's kind of like this like space it awesome. basketball it was great Pyo is phenomenal um, but yeah Hades seems like it's way more just hack and slash and you're leveling up your character and buying new abilities and stuff which isn't as in inventive as I'd like to see from well, them well you mentioned before we started recording that it's the engine is the same as their past games. Well, it, it looks exactly you a little bit. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I was like, oh god, you've already used it three times. Right. Like it was, uh, yeah, it was the same engine, or it looked like the same engine in Bastion, Transistor, and Pyre. Why fix what isn't broken? Ah, just I don't know, just to do something a bit different. But I guess that's <laughs> kind of their thing. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, a lot of this stuff with Transistor, the way that the combat was in that, was the same style of hack and slash that looks to be in Hades. Um, so I mean, at least they they can kind of play to their strengths. Transistor had this whole thing where you freeze time, allocate where you want to hit, and then resume time, and you just kill everybody in like a great big blur um, like PS2 gem Alter Echo which I guarantee me and three people will know doesn't mean anything probably not that. even that to be honest I don't think either of you were born but it was a thing um, but yeah Supergiant make nothing but lovely things and I'm sure it'll come back around speaking of lovely things kind of not at all there's a new Far Cry called Far Cry New Dawn where did that come oh. from I don't know to be honest did you Ooh. know this was a thing well no <laughs> do you care February no, no. yeah February February it's February. coming out that is, that is like as of now like th what three months away yeah yeah Technically, you count bit. December. I mean, it's uh, I mean, it's weird, right? Because the the general art direction that they're going with is this post-apocalypse, but with hyper colors, lots of greens and purples, and lots of over-the-top characters. You would say it was Mad Max, if not for the Rage Two trailer. And so I think <laughs> I don't think they've obviously de like, they haven't had the development time yeah. to look at that and pivot towards Clearly it. Clearly, what it is is because kind of um, I don't know. Was Far Cry Five? I mean, obviously it did well, but I didn't think it did like massively it wasn't very well. Good. Ah. I want to say because it's a direct sort of sequel almost. It's probably just like your, you know how Wolfenstein got the, the old blood, like yeah, for example, yeah. like a sort of add-on, mm -hmm. in my opinion, well, that's, that's probably what it is. Far Cry so. Primal was very, very soon after Far Cry 4. Oh, so it was, yeah. yeah. And Blood Dragon was kind of 3's follow-up, and yes. then we had Primal. I guess it's maybe just part of the course. I mean, they can get more money out of the same engine. This, I, um, it looks fine. It looks all right. I'm actually <laughs> quite a big defender of the Far Cry, Cry series. I thought Far I, Cry 5 yeah. played really well and was quite enjoyable. But oh, the it, thing it definitely that did, grinds but... my gears is that after Blood Dragon, they could have done anything they wanted. They could have gone as wacky as they wanted to mm. because that was like the proof of the pudding of that you could make Far Cry this kind of, you know, serious shooter, but then also spin it off into these crazy ideas. And they put out um, a survey asking fans what they wanted in the next oh, yeah. um, sort of Far Cry. Do you want it to go... 
back in time, like dinosaurs, pre, uh, aliens, stuff like that. Uh-huh. Oh. And they have never quite capitalized on those ideas mm. yet. I know the DLC for Far Cry 5 was wacky and you went to Mars and stuff, but to just do something as kind of basic and overdone as a post-apocalyptic shooter at this point just seems yeah. like... You could do anything. We've got Rage 2 coming out next year. We don't need any more. Plus as well, I mean, if you're going to end up holding them side by side, which we obviously will next year, like Rage 2, developed by id Software, has the the Doom-style arena shooter, the the sense of, like, insanely fast locomotion that's in that series. Oh, sorry, from that developer. And it's just like, as much as I like like the Far Cry games, but I don't think that they play with anywhere near as much weight or Mm -hmm. pace or payoff or anything. Um, And Far Cry 5 was, like, pushing that appeal to breaking point. I was like, this is just more of the same. Like, there's another crazy dictator. Yeah, there's another set of collectibles, there's mm-hmm. another whatever. And I kind of burnt out on that straight away. So I don't know. I guess I'm curious to see what they do. But I. People who love the series will be delighted, though. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of DLC. And plus, the last game, Far Cry 5, had a whole creation suite. So there's a lot of different ways yes. to play around with those elements. Um, so another bigger deal is Obsidian's new project. Now, this is called wow. The Outer Worlds. Um, this is the thing that they're developing exclusive, <laughs> exclusively for the Xbox and the thing that uh, Microsoft allowed them to you know, help put together and help to, uh, help to fund. So this is pretty much a series of dream, fan dreams come true yeah. because it's nigh on them making the next Fallout in open name. It's, yeah, it's New Vegas meets Borderlands meets... Oh my goodness. Starfield, and it's not even out yet. Starfield, yeah, exactly. (laughs) I think, I mean, the way that they've gone about it, obviously the Fallout branding was front and center in the trailer. Obviously they can't, they're not Bethesda, but it literally says, from the original creators of Fallout, and then who brought you Fallout New Vegas. I mean, they're not wrong. No, they're not wrong, and that's the thing. And obviously, I mean, I remember when uh, Microsoft bought Obsidian, I think we talked about it on one of the videos we did, about how they would use that front and center of the marketing, because that's how you get the, there's there's an argument to be made that the Fallout fandom is is primed to be taken Mm -hmm. from Bethesda, and it's about time that someone swooped in and said, here's everything you want Fallout to be. It's not 76 and it ain't Fallout 4. Here's this New Vegas follow-up with an actual dialogue system. So Look, I, I want to see it. I don't want to I don't want to buy into the hype or sort of get yes, a do. bit dramatic. But what are you me? Yes on. you do. I want this game to take me out. I want this game <laughs> to wine and dine me. I want to show it a good time. I want it to be my lover to be honest. Recommend Scott. An this, album. Scott, this this trailer really genuinely blew me away. Mm. We've had the Avengers 4 trailer today and I've watched this like five <laughs> times. It's everything you just said like the the Fallout fandom, if you will, have sort of waxed I, and I waned. Need this. Waxed and waned. I need this space age, old west frontier style weird RPG where you can <laughs> do whatever you want. Because Obsidian have been doing great work for the past few years, but they have haven't made a proper kind of triple A RPG mm. in mm-hmm. a long time. And now that they've been given sort of the ability to make just a blank a, slate, a blank. It, that, yeah. That's exactly what it is. A blank slate to kind of. Go nuts, do what they want, you've mm-hmm. earned this. I just I just want it to succeed. <laughs> I want it to succeed. It's very, very good timing as well, with mm. uh, yeah. 76 being like slashed in half in price and you know, I mean Bethesda aren't around. exactly in people's good books right now. Sadly. And so there's a lot to, to play on in as far as what they're not delivering to a core fan base. And Obsidian have always had the fan vote. People love New Vegas. Um so it's always like if they step to the, the plate kind of thing and say, Hey, we've got this whole new IP, it's everything you want and more, yeah. and we can bring new things to the table. For me, that solves everything. Interesting that it's a multi-platform release, though. Is I, it? I, I, unless I've been I mistaken. Mean, why not? I, thought, I thought I'm sure at the end it said play, PlayStation Four. That is interesting. I thought the whole crack was that Microsoft had bought them to make something for the. This Xbox. was in development before that deal was finalized. Oh. So I think their next game will be uh, Microsoft exclusive, but this franchise looks like it's going to be. Uh, okay. Well, either way, I mean, either it might way. Be timed. Yeah, it might be timed. And plus, they're taking uh, t- they're taking potential fandoms and money out of Bethesda's pockets, which should in like. A long enough timeline make the next Fallout something special. Yeah, competition is good, you know. Exactly, which kind of gets right back around to the way that we open things up. Um, So the next game from your favorite developer and mine, Hello Games, because I love No Man's Sky. Yes, I do. Uh, They've got a new thing coming called The Last Campfire. Now, I'm amazed that they had time to do anything else. (laughs) Do you know what? They have. It does actually look adorable. Yeah. I love a good indie game. Journey. I love a good indie game. Mm-hmm. It does look adorable. It's got kind of like a journey style art style. The the characters have the same sort of like religious connotative like clothing and I really like the look of yeah, that. Yeah, very journey. Very did you mm. ever play that one uh, Never Alone with the girl and the fox? Ooh, yeah. it sort of almost reminded me of that just uh-huh. in the sort of style there's a lot of yeah there's um I can't think of oh god a million games come to mind because it, <laughs> it does sort of connote stuff like a journey or like anything that's sort of this kind of adventure heavy type stuff and obviously it's called The Last Campfire which harkens back to the soul's influence and the idea of the nice warmth of the fire being a checkpoint um, I think it made quite a positive impression not everything is like Dark Souls <laughs> maybe it is maybe it just is and maybe the sooner we oh, admit that the better the Dark Souls of podcasts it might right just now. be which means it's wholesome and loved by many so that's fine I also hated 
played by many of yeah, the found out. like Hello Games. But either way, they've got another game coming uh, called The Last Campfire, which is a complete deviation from what uh, No Man's Sky is. And um, we shall quickly herald the moving on, though, because Mortal Kombat 11 Ooh, also got a trailer. That yeah. trailer might have been, well, not my favorite trailer, because the I, Obsidian game, but well, yeah, it on. was a good, good trailer. Yes. It was so I mean, brutal, I it so did nothing did away. Not See that coming. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. To be fair, that was one of the leaks that we just yeah. knew was nigh on a, uh, an announcement beforehand. But uh, we didn't know what was going to happen with the roster. So the fact that they showed a new character who seems yes. to be bending time and bringing in the old characters from the original three games or two games, um, that's a great way to tap back into those older levels and remaster them. Like the same way they did in the 2011 one, mm -hmm. um, which was just the story meant that they went back in time and whatever. Um, so I'm way more up for them doing that and just like <laughs> take those old school levels and make them new again. Me because I, it, was, it was just so fun and mm. I really enjoyed um, MK9. I, I I didn't get into um, X as much as I wanted to. I to thought be it was a letdown. Yeah. I thought it was Too a little bit as same. well. Yeah, I'm with you. So I, I'm hoping they do something new and kind of push it forward. Mm. Like with Injustice in particular, I think they've gone from strength to strength and yes. they haven't sort of had that time to kind of not languish, but kind of, you know, Peter out a little I think bit. they can like reassess their strengths. I mean, like mm. the with Injustice, you had like a really great story mode. Obviously, it had a lot of characters and, and mythologies to play off, but the lo loot system was great. I really liked the way that that thing played. It's so tight. And I think they did a lot of really good like power play, like you know, set, like set pieces and cutscenes and little things that sort of drop in during each fight. I love Injustice too. I love many things, <laughs> but I think that they can then re like apply that to Mortal Kombat. Like yeah. for example, the loot system. Like if I'm getting some big like Emperor style Sub Zero with massive shoulder pads and I can just go and dominate online, then that's a pretty good way for that franchise to go. Character cu customization is a yes from me. Yes. Like every time. And I think, I mean, the way that they did it in Injustice 2, obviously they had the loot boxes and, and that kind of stuff. I didn't, it didn't feel exploitative. Like for me, I mm -hmm. kind of thought that they balanced it pretty well. Yeah. So, I mean, I think if they carry that across into Mortal Kombat, that is another franchise prime to just pick different p costumes and pieces from the last yeah. 25 years. Love it. And bring some stuff in. My slight worry, because yes. I guess I'm just the negative one of this podcast Yeah, what the hell, man? Is the fact that, have a good time. like you mentioned, the series is played with its history and past before, and mm. it, it does it to great successes. But again, is it just going to be more of the same if we're going back in time? It really needs to shake <sighs> it up for me, because it's a great concept. And if they kind of fumble it, I'll be slightly disappointed, but yeah. I'm going to be fanboying all over the place anyway. I, so. I hope that because, I mean, NetherRealm are obviously the studio for Mortal Kombat, but because of the things that they've done in Injustice, they like you know they know how to do super heroic fights like to a T, and they've always had gods and, and deities and demons and whatever in Mortal Kombat, but the general like scale of each fight was never really over the top. It was just sort of like punching, kicking you on the one plane, yes. you're not know, taking to the skies or anything. And I don't want anything too over the top, but in the uh, Mortal Kombat versus DC game, they had that thing where if you both get knocked off the side of a level, you would punch each other in midair. That was cool. As you like fell down, and whoever got yeah. the got the advantage would like land properly, and then that would be the one that would like you know be able to carry the fight on, getting the advantage. And little bits like that carried more into Injustice than Mortal Kombat. Um, so I'd like to see them put you know more things like that in. Mortal Kombat versus DC was all right, you know. It was fine, but uh, it was so. Come on. Let's, let's I, I don't know. I think <laughs> the last game time... of twenty nine, <laughs> <laughs> alongside Crash Nitro Car. <laughs> I think um, I don't know. For me, I kind of just yeah. I want them to just not go back to the drawing board, but I want them to rethink about why do people love Mortal Kombat and not play it as safe as they did with MK10. And I kind of hope that they've killed the younger characters because mm. I really just, oh, no just... need for them. They were fine. I mean, you didn't like Cassie Cage. Cassie Cage. <laughs> just... It's just taking a selfie with a headless corpse. I, I thought, like that. I thought that All was right. quite funny. I'm yeah. kidding. I'm kidding. I don't hate anyone. <laughs> <laughs> you know this, I don't hate anything. It's true. You don't even um, Cassie Cage. But pugnacious little individual. She's just a lady just doing her best. I just can identify taking with Taking some that. selfies. But I think if they, to, to speak of, to going forward, obviously they need to re reassess the roster, reassess the way that people like responded to the new additions in MK10. Um, and that's the thing. In the trailer, we've got Scorpion again um, and Raiden's in there and I forget who he's fighting, but like we've got the, the standard characters. Yeah. And I kind of think that their way of doing it is to bring the old school in, literally make it part of the plot and go, here's the thing you wanted, all right? Here it is. <laughs> here's literally Mortal Kombat 1 and 2. And so we'll kind of have to see how they go forward with that. So, so our biggest news of the thing, kinda, but something to end on, is Dragon Age 4. Now I don't Ooh. care, to be honest. Do you know, I, no, a I, surprise. I, well, it is. Well, he says you, the man, not to cycle all the combat. <laughs> but I, uh, Dragon Age, I, I liked the first Dragon Age. Didn't play two, and then I played a lot of Inquisition and thought it was meh. Right. So you guys have assumedly played more Dragon Age. Did than you? Me. Um, did you? I guess you didn't finish Inquisition then. I didn't finish it. No. Okay, I liked all so. the factional warfare stuff. But did it get? Um, did it get really good? Well, the teaser is very good because it relates to, I believe, the after credit scene after Inquisition where a character that we know and love quite well sort of betrays us. Is it that us. big sexy bison man? It's not. <laughs> is he alive still? Iron Bill. Mm. No? He can be. <laughs> if you play the DLC. Okay. What did you do to Iron Bill, Josh? Iron Bill, that's the one. 
Iron Paul. So okay, so Iron when um, so it's it's very cryptic sort of trailer. Um, I mean, I'm not the biggest Dragon Age like sort of nut, mm -hmm. but uh, so I don't really know what the whole dagger thing means. Um, but I do know whose voice that is, and it is very exciting. Okay. Is it a spoiler to say who it is? I mean, it would be a shame if anyone hadn't finished Inquisition. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. It's it's going to be tied in very closely to that game. Okay. Put it that way. I'm, How how is how um, well no 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 not worried. I would like to be into Dragon Age more. I, I certainly played a hell of a lot of Inquisition. It was just that the, I didn't think the combat was especially it's fun not, or anything. It's not. It's not the best combat. Mm. No. So with this one, hopefully they sort of you know take a look at that. Maybe make it a bit more like one was just a bit sort of simpler. Yeah. Like, in my I just, opinion. I like the idea of pausing the overhead cam and planning and everything, yeah, but it got a bit of a mess. Mm. Like yeah, it needs refining. I think. Yeah, it but does, I'm a yeah. sucker for turn-based combat, so whatever. But um, I mean, what do you guys think of terms of why they're dropping this now? Because Anthem was there too. Anthem was. At the VGAs and they showed like a new chunk of gameplay. I think they're dropping it now entirely because of Anthem. I think, yeah. I, although there are no doubt people looking forward to Anthem, that's such a big shift for Bioware as a whole. <laughs> it's such a big shift for Bioware as a whole, I think. And they keep using the Dragon Age um, franchise as yeah. sort of being like, no, we're not. We've we're still not, got a thing. We've still got a thing that you like. We've still got Dragon Age is an apology. <laughs> it kind of. That's kind of what I'm thinking. That's kind of what it like, feels like, Rich. It, yeah. Honestly, I don't think this game is anywhere close to being completed. Even no. the last time we heard of it, it was in the very early pre-production planning stages. Mm -hmm. And a rumor went around when it was leaked. Cause obviously, it was leaked. Uh, said that it was at least three years off, and I fully believe that because I feel like they're using this franchise as a way of. You're going to get some single player great yeah. story driven games that we know sort of about. This, but it's sorry, it's sorry to cut you off. No it's worries. Probably you similar to what Bethesda did, where they were like, 76. Oh, but by the way, Elder Scrolls 6 is coming. <laughs> exactly. So that's what Bioware are doing also. It's, like, it's a worthwhile PR tactic because if you, I mean, obviously Anthem isn't doing very well. And it's not like, no, I don't know anybody who's talking about it positively. The general sort of pre order numbers apparently aren't very strong. And a, they have apparently signed a 10 year deal with EA. So. <laughs> I don't really see that working very well. And I think that you can kind of tell that the, the whole idea of it, the project was commissioned along the time when Destiny looked to be a, a good thing. And obviously Destiny's kind of gone by the wayside too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so Anthem's kind of arriving in this weird post loot shooter, post microtransaction explosion, uh, you know, landscape. And I just don't see the appeal for it. So I kind of think they've gone, well, what else have we got that appeals to the true gamer or mm -hmm. whatever? And their answer is Dragon Age because they don't have a whole lot of other nascent franchises. Yeah, that's... that's it ain't Kotal. <laughs> it's, it's definitely... Sadly, no, it ain't Kotal. Sadly not. I'm not as down as on Anthem as you are. I, I'm I never think, that, okay, I'm right. never that down. I'm just laying out the foundation. I'm reading the terrain. Okay, then. As I, Black Widow I, I once think said. Go as bad as you say. I do think <laughs> it can sort of, it might just die on its bum it in might. this post microtransaction, post loot mm. box kind of world. But there is potential there to make it something special. Mm -hmm. Whether or not they do that, it is going to be a big risk and a big experiment. And it's nice, at least, to see that Bioware still have Dragon Age in their locker so that if this. Does, if this fails, mm -hmm. if Anthem fails and is a, a bad endeavor, they've still got something to keep them alive. It's very true. I will ask you one question to end this podcast. Do you know what the Anthem is in Anthem? It is Anthem Part 2 by Blink-182, isn't it? No. <laughs> oh. It is Anthem by Good Charlotte. That's it, yeah. I don't ever oh. want to be But that is a thing that's... I don't want to be just like you. Like I don't you. want to just be like me. I, but I also girl. think... That we're like what three trailers in, and they just haven't. They've kind of said the anthem's a really impressive thing, and it's oh, it's changing the world. I'm like, what's the anthem? It's, Apparently, it's the world. It's, it's a song. Do you know what? No. Why don't we just relax? Oh. It's coming out in a couple of months. It might we'll find be, out what it is. It might be really good. I just I, I feel so it. sorry for Casey Hudson and the crew because I love used to love Casey Hudson yeah. before Mass Effect Three, and I just I looked at him coming out during the VJs and I was like, mate, this game is getting you down. <laughs> you did not have the bags under your eyes last time I saw you. And it just kind of seems like these things are getting in the way of I don't know, getting the game out in a more positive kind of light. But whatever, I didn't um, have the bags under my eyes before I started this podcast. No, that's good. That yeah, cheers. People lipping in for just to disrupt our podcast, but not to worry, we're at the end anyway. Be sure so, to subscribe to What Culture Wrestling, where everyone's very mature. Yes, that was Adam Nicholas. So go and go very and harass him on uh, on the social media. But yes, <laughs> this has been the What Culture Gaming Podcast. I have been your host, Scott Taylor. Joined by Rich. Thank you very much for watching. And joined by Josh. Thank you very much for watching. And goodbye. We'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.